Deadly standoff unfolding on an empty high school campus why police say they felt they needed to use force. That suspect, someone authorities have been searching for for weeks. The other incidents they say he was involved in that ended with shots fired at bounty hunters and police officers. And why the FDA and CDC say they're putting a temporary pause on the Johnson & Johnson rollout and what health experts are saying. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. ABC 10 News starts now with breaking news. A standoff on the campus of San Diego High School that we've been following since last night has finally come to an end with a suspect dead, shot by police. The man and a woman who was with him were barricaded in a dumpster for hours. ABC 10 News anchor Mary McKenzie joining us live at the scene. Mary, this was not the peaceful resolution that police were hoping for. Hey, of course, police were hoping, Jim, that Christopher Marquez would surrender peacefully, that this would have that resolution. But lethal force had been authorized hours before, and ultimately they felt they had to use it as the situation escalated here at San Diego High School. The scene here uh, nearly cleared this morning, but Marquez did die here just before 9 this morning, shot by two SWAT officers, fearing for the safety of the woman who was in that dumpster with Marquez for hours overnight. San San Diego police say she had tried to escape several times, but that he kept pulling her back in each time until just before nine this morning. She began screaming and begging for the male not to shoot her and not to do this. Uh, two officers saw the male push the female towards the ground and they could see a rifle being brought up, prompting them both to fire their weapons. Marquez again dying here at the scene. The woman was not hurt, but this was again a nearly 12 hour standoff and a chase that started about eight last night. National City Police telling us this morning they believe the woman was driving the car during that chase. They spotted Marquez riding as a passenger last night, tried to pull him over. They took off leading this high speed chase from near the sports arena through the Nimitz area, West Point Loma. And at three separate times, they say Marquez fired at their officers. The third time here at San Diego High School near the the city college when officers were ultimately able to fire back Marquez and the woman jumping into the dumpster which is on the campus Marquez they say had at least one handgun and a rifle at one point police say he surrendered that handgun but there was concern about what might happen negotiators brought in this huge perimeter set up SWAT swarming the school campuses in fear uh, this was a man who showed brazen disregard for life having shot at the officers with a long criminal and violent history as well wanted by several departments and they tried for hours to negotiate but as that situation escalated again ultimately SWAT officers had that view from above the dumpster taking the shots that killed Marquez and ultimately brought this standoff to an end here this morning reporting live downtown Mary McKenzie ABC 10 News Mary thank you so much for that standoff over now but it's location forcing nearby schools to adjust this morning Here's a list of the schools that decided to move all their classes online to keep students safe away from the police activity. San Diego High, East Village Middle, College High, and Garfield High, all going to virtual learning for the day. So schools still in session online. Other on-campus activities were canceled, though. Marquez has had a long history of trouble with law enforcement. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell has more on his previous run-ins with police. Within a matter of weeks, Christopher Marquez has been at the center of several dangerous situations involving law enforcement in the South Bay. In March, police say bounty hunters were serving a warrant for Marquez in Chula Vista when he opened fire on them, injuring one. He's shown no regard for anyone's life. He's willing to do whatever it takes to get away. That warrant connected to a previous standoff on Outer Road near Coronado Avenue a few years ago. That standoff ended peacefully after Marquez surrendered following several tense hours. And then just last week, Marquez is accused of shooting at National City police officers. I wasn't surprised at all. Um, this guy's a very dangerous man. They believe the car he was in was stolen. Two women inside surrendered. Police say Marquez jumped out and ran away from officers. He shot at them. None of them were hurt. Marquez got away and the search for him continued ending this morning with gunfire in downtown San Diego. Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. You can find a full breakdown of this morning's standoff and the events leading up to it on 10news.com.
In breaking news out of Minneapolis, where we're just learning the officer accused of shooting and killing a black motorist has resigned. That officer, identified as Kim Potter, is accused of killing 20-year-old Dante Wright on Sunday in what the police chief described as an accidental shooting. He said Potter meant to reach for her taser but fired her gun instead by mistake. Shooting sparked protests as well as rioting, and we have also learned Brooklyn Center Police Chief Tim Gannon is also resigning in the wake of this incident, and we'll have much more on those demonstrations that erupted overnight in just a few minutes here. Well, new today, the FDA and CDC calling for a pause to the rollout of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine as regulators investigate reports linking the vaccine to blood clots. Officials say they're looking at six cases right now, and that's out of the nearly 7 million J&J &J doses that have been given out so far. But they say these blood clots weren't listed as potential side effects. ABC's Ike Ijachi has the latest on what health officials and Johnson & Johnson are saying about this situation. Today, federal health officials calling for a pause in the use of Johnson & Johnson's single-shot COVID vaccine. COVID-19 vaccine safety is a top priority for the federal government. And we take all reports of adverse events following vaccination very seriously. The request comes as six people, all women ages 18 to 48, developed a rare condition that causes blood clots about a week after receiving their dose. Health experts say these clots are not always treated the same as other blood clots. Johnson & Johnson says there's no causal relationship between the rare blood clots and its vaccine. Public health officials want to pause administrating the J&J shot so doctors can learn more about what's happening. The time frame uh, will depend, obviously, on what we learn in the next few days. However, we expect it to be a matter of days for this pause. This morning, Dr. Ashish Jha telling ABC he agrees with the decision to pause the vaccine, adding he still believes the J&J shot is very safe and feels comfortable giving it to his own family. We have a system that's working. And so I personally hope that this will build more confidence in the vaccines. Uh, that's, I think, what people should be focused on. This as the WHO says COVID cases are climbing globally. And here at home, the daily case average is now at peak summer surge levels, about 66,000 cases per day. In Michigan, cases are rising at an alarming rate as the state's governor says its vaccine supply can't keep up, prompting this blunt response from the CDC director. Go back to our basics, to go back to where we were last spring, um, last summer and to, to shut things down, to flatten the curve. So far, out of the nearly 7 million J&J &J shots given to Americans, public health officials say only those six women developed clots. Ike Ajaji, ABC News, Washington. In the last hour, Dr. Anthony Fauci spoke at an impromptu news conference at the White House about the problems with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine looking to calm concerns. This is an unusual occurrence of a serious adverse event that you want to make sure before you go forward, you investigate it thoroughly. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're pausing so that they can look at it more carefully. Now, if you've already received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, Dr. Fauci says he recommends paying attention to how you're feeling. Watch for symptoms such as headache, shortness of breath, or chest discomfort. Well, new today, the Padres announcing plans to increase attendance after San Diego's move into the state's orange tier. Here's a look at some of the changes. Padres bumping up total capacity at Petco to 33%, up from 20% before. Team says some sections will have higher capacity, up to two-thirds of the seats filled, but those will require proof of having been fully vaccinated or a recent negative COVID test. Petco still offering mobile and contactless concession pickups, and more capacity means more seats for season ticket members, some of whom we've seen having a tough time getting into games. Tickets for that group going up online tomorrow and these larger crowds starting Friday just in time for the Padres homestand against the Dodgers.